Hello, everyone. We're going to get started in just a second. Um, we'll um, start in about a minute or so um, to leave uh, so for some other people to hop on to the training session. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, good afternoon or good morning to everyone um, here for the event and team training session. This is going to be a technical training session on our event and team product. My name is Lisa Galbrin. I'm the community engagement manager here at Mighty Cause. So for today's agenda, we're first gonna be going over what is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. For those of you who are not familiar with Mighty Cause or our events and team product, it is a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tool. Uh, so we'll be going over what exactly is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising in case you're not familiar. And then we're gonna be going over what are the differences between our event fundraising page and our team fundraising page so you know what you need to create for your nonprofit. Once we quickly go over those key things, we're gonna be going over the technical walkthrough and we're gonna be going from start to finish of creating an event, publishing it, and then what you do when it's finished and completed. And as we're going through everything, uh, I'll be answering questions. You should see a go to webinar control panel on your right hand side. Uh, there is an area for you to ask questions please feel free to use that space uh, to ask any questions you have. If we don't have time to get to any questions, uh, we'll be um, directly emailing you and answering your questions there. As well, you'll notice that there is a handout section in your control panel. There will be a copy of this slide deck in there as well for you to download um, and keep with you. And then after the webinar, we'll be sending out an email with a copy of this as well. And before we begin, one thing to note is we have a large um, variety of nonprofits on this training session. Some that have utilized Mighty Cause before, some have never util utilized our platform before. So I'm gonna be trying to covering as much information as possible to cover um, all those basics. Um, so please just be cognizant of that as we're going through this session is that we have a lot of different nonprofits on here. Okay, so let's jump in quickly um, and kind of just talk about for a brief moment, what is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising? As I mentioned, that is what our events and teams product is used for. And peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is a technique where a nonprofit leverages existing supporters to bring in new supporters by asking them to create a fundraiser and ask their social network for donations. So you're asking supporters to create their own fundraising pages and solicit donations to their network of, of uh, friends and family. And the benefit of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, of course, is new donor acquisition. It's a way to generate buzz on social media. And of course, these individual fundraising pages, they act as a great testimonial um, to share the importance of your mission and your work. And so that's what our team and events product is for. So the term team and event obviously is a bit broad and many organizations can use those terms in different ways. One organization may be planning an event um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they need our event fundraising page for their event that they're planning. Again, it's for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And we're going to be then going over what exactly are the differences between the team and event fundraising page. So a team fundraising page on Mighty Cause is a group fundraising page where participants fundraise individually towards a collective goal. An event fundraising page 
combines this idea of indiv individuals fundraising, but also combines these group fundraising pages. And you'll see that in a second in more detail. On the right hand side, you'll see a perfect example of a team fundraising page. Um, this is a collective page for this group. And then on the left of the image, you'll see a leaderboard where it lists all the individual participants within this team. So again, individuals participating towards a collective goal. And a this team fundraising page is really great for groups such as board of directors, maybe departments of a company, um, volunteers, etc. Again, individuals that want to fundraise within a group. So for example, a family may not be a great use of a team fundraising page because the individuals within a family may not want to fundraise independently. They want to fundraise as a group, but they don't need their own fundraising pages. So it's if you really think about the individual aspect, that's why when you want to use a team fundraising page. And of course, these individual fundraising pages, as I mentioned before, provide an opportunity for each individual to share their own story of your nonprofit and the campaign. So an event fundraising page is really great for a larger scale peer-to-peer -peer effort. You're taking individual fundraising pages and you're also taking multiple team group fundraising pages together. And that's why it's really great for a larger scale peer-to-peer -peer effort. As well, our event fundraising page provides you with additional tools such as the ability to utilize registration via Eventbrite or even the ability to shout out sponsors. And as we're going through the technical walkthrough, you're going to be able to see each of these um, fundraising pages. So here is a great example of an event fundraiser that has teams and individual fundraising pages. So on the left hand side, you'll see Invergrove Heights Annual Readathon. That is the event fundraising page. And this school had a campaign where they created a team for each grade within their school. So as you see in the top right corner, that is the team page. It represents that grade. And then parents joined that team and created a fundraising page for their child. So you kind of see the hierarchy and the utility of the team and the event. So let's say you're planning a peer-to-peer -peer campaign and you don't really need group fundraising pages. You don't see the use for them for your specific campaign. Then you'll definitely wanna just create an independent team fundraising page. You don't have to create an event fundraising page. And this is a great an example of a campaign in which they it was Boston Pedicabbers. They're raising money for an organization in their area. And they were just going to have participants join. They were going to be divided up into groups, anything like that. So they just created a team fundraising page and used that to donate. So I'm going to be jumping into the technical walkthrough in a second, but I just wanted to shout out some support resources that we do have. One is our support forum. We have a designated area for event and team fundraising if you need any technical help. The second is the uh, event fundraising handbook. If you're looking for more information in general about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, definitely download that handbook. If you're looking for more strategic help, so if you're wanting to know how do I get a matching grant for my campaign, how do I motivate participants, uh, those type of articles are available through our blog. And of course, if you have any specific questions, you can always email our support at support at mightycause.com. And this information, again, is available in the downloadable slide deck and will be emailed out to you. All right. So let's begin. I'm going to jump into the technical walkthrough. So I've pulled up our homepage, which is www.mightycause.com if you are not familiar with our, um, our homepage. And I'm currently logged in and I can see I'm logged in through the right hand corner right here. Uh, and if I click on that, I'll be able to see my name listed there as well as the organization that I'm an administrator of. 
if you are uh, representing an organization, if you are an employee of an organization, you want to make sure that you're set up as an administrator of that nonprofit. Um, so this is the organization profile page that I am an admin of. So you want to make sure that you're set up as an administrator there and you can do so by simply selecting this search, search your organization's name or EIN, you'll pull it up and then you can request to manage that organization through that profile page. If you're not representing an organization, if you don't work for an organization, but you're just running this campaign on behalf of an organization, organization you don't have to worry about this step you don't have to be added as an administrator but we would highly recommend that you contact someone from the organization and have them be set up as an administrator so that they can set up direct deposit information and they can keep track of disbursements to their nonprofit all right so once i'm logged in i'm going to select fundraise and this is going to take me to the fundraising solutions page on mighty cause where I can start either a team, an individual fundraising page, or an event. For the example that I'm gonna be doing today, I'm gonna to be copying a little bit about of that readathon that you saw. I'm gonna be doing an event fundraising page that encompasses some teams, so you're gonna see both. And I also wanna point out here, there's really no wrong answer in regards to if you choose to make a team or event, it's really your preference. Um, obviously, I kind of noted some differences um, during that slide, um, slide deck, but if you have any questions and, or any confusion about what you should create, feel free to email um, our support team. We're more than happy to kind of guide you in the right direction. So I'm gonna create a team. I'm going to get started. And the first question I'm going to be asked is where will funds go? If you want funds for your campaign to go to one nonprofit automatically, you would keep it at single beneficiary. However, let's say you are a company and you are planning a campaign where all of your employees, they're going to participate, but you want them to decide what nonprofit they're going to be fundraising for. Then you're going to select multiple beneficiaries multiple beneficiaries allows the participants to select the nonprofit that they want to support. So for this example, I'm going to select single, and then I'm going to search for my nonprofit name. One little tip that I will give um, everyone here is I would highly recommend entering the EIN of your nonprofit in this space, especially if your nonprofit's name is, is pretty common or has um, you know, common terms in there. You want to make sure that you're connecting your event or team to the right nonprofit. But I'm going to just be searching Mighty Cause here because that's a pretty unique name. And I can also double check that that is the correct organization through the EIN listed here. Yep, that looks right. So I'm going to continue. And I'm going to launch my event manager. Great. So now I have a blank fundraising page. I'm just gonna kind of quickly scroll through here through here so you see it. As you kind of can notice, every month everything is already set up for you. Uh, it's really just fill in the blank as to what you need to do. And on the left hand side, you're gonna see a dashboard. And this dashboard provides you the ability to edit your page through the page editor and as well as manage your organization through different sections through here. And the last section on the dashboard is publish. You will need to publish your fundraising page in order for it to be live and active. If you want people to donate, even if you want people to start joining it, you have to physically publish your page. And by publishing your page, you just have to fill out some key things about your event in order to do so. Sometimes uh, organizers are a little bit nervous to publish their page before their event is kind of ready. And one thing to note again, if you haven't been publicizing the link to your fundraising page yet, you don't have to really be worried about publishing it. Again, it's just making that donate button active and allowing people to officially participate in it. But you know, as long as you haven't emailed a direct link out, you don't really have to worry about it being published on the platform. 
And as I mentioned, the page editor allows you to edit different parts of the page or you can directly select through here. And the first section is called live page. And live page will show you what the page will look like to donors when they head to your fundraising page. So as you're editing your page, you want to just keep a, a you want to select this section and just take a look at it because the formatting may differ just slightly. So I'm going to begin quickly editing my fundraising page. So I'm going to select the title right here. And I'm going to do Mighty Cause Virtual Read. Thon. Great. And now once I've written my title down, I'm going to add a logo image to my event. So I'm going to just be populating an image that I have on hand currently. For this logo area, the image requirements are one-to-one, -one, so please make sure that the logo that you are entering there is a square. If you are trying to import a rectangle or any other uh, image um, that's not a square, it's going to be cropped different weirdly. So you want to make sure that you're going to be placing a square there. Now, once I have that logo in place, you'll kind of notice this um, background image behind the logo. And I can edit that background image by selecting theme. And once I have theme, there's an area called background image. If you don't have a background image um, that you particularly want for your campaign, I highly recommend checking out unsplash.com. If you're not familiar with unsplash.com, um, it's a free uh, photo um, resource where you can download photos through here and utilize it for commercial reuse. So I definitely recommend checking it out because it has a lot of great photos on there that you could utilize for your campaign or for any, um, for your background image, as I mentioned. And so I actually downloaded a, a background photo from Unsplash and I'm gonna be adding it on here. So I'm just gonna be selecting background image. And then bringing it here. Great. So within the theme section, you can also choose your filter strength. So if you want it to be very transparent or translucent, and also choose that kind of color of the background image. So I'm gonna just filter it through here. And the theme color is the color that shows up on your donate button and your dollars raised. So I'm gonna change my theme color. Once I've made those edits, I just wanna click on the check mark right here. Wonderful. So the white on the title, as well as the font, that is not something that is editable. So that is something that is just within the template. So it's not something that you can um, edit or change. So I'm gonna scroll down and work on the story section. So this is where you're gonna share information about your event. There is an inline text editor, so you can do different formatting. I've pre-written some text for our event, which I highly recommend. And so I'm just going to copy and paste that from my notepad. So I wanna add just a couple of different formatting so that it looks a little bit more professional. So I'm just going to um, make that heading stand out a bit more. And I'm also going to add an image within my description. You can also add videos within here too, but one thing to note about videos is that you do need to have your video imported already in uh, YouTube or um, Vimeo. So it has to be a link that you're adding in here. It can't be direct import. So I'm gonna be adding another image on here.
I'm going to be making sure that this photo is breaking the text so that it's separated. And then I'm going to also make it centered. Great. So if I wanted to, I could also, as I mentioned, use, utilize this inline text editor to add a hyperlink to uh, you know, bullet point or list something. So there's a lot of different options available to you. As we scroll down, uh, there is a sponsor and affiliate section. So if there are any shout outs you wanna make, maybe to local businesses or to partner organizations that you're working with, you can utilize the space to shout them out. So to add a sponsor section, you simply select add new section. And I'm gonna title this area sponsors. Within, I'm gonna display the image of our sponsor. And then I'm going to list their name. And if I want, I can also share their URL. And I'm going to save this. So if I go back to my or my event fundraising page, I can see the sponsor listed here. And donors will be able to click on that and go to that sponsor's link. And again, that title is something I placed there. You can make it whatever you want, and you can also do different hierarchies, etc. For any participant of your page, they're going to see that sponsor um, on there. Lastly, within this section, I just wanna highlight uh, an additional space where you can add information. You can actually add a custom tab. Oops. Uh, so for example, if you have um, maybe prize information that you want to highlight, to your donors or to your participants. You can add another section so that once people come into your event page, they can learn more about you know, various information on here. Maybe you want that to be an image gallery, whatever you want that to be. And then the last section is our event and organizer info. And that simply provides uh, your uh, your participants information on where the event is taking place. If your event is going to be virtual, I would just recommend to provide the city location of where the nonprofit is located in. So I'm just going to be doing Washington, D.C. for right now. Great. So if at any point you're curious about where you are at with um, you know, publishing your page, you can always come back and select publish and it'll always tell you what you need to complete. So we still need to complete our goal and our deadline. So I'm gonna head back at the top and I'm gonna enter our goal. And then I'm also going to be entering a deadline date. And this deadline date, you can always change. So you don't worry, you don't have to worry about setting something in stone. So now that I've completed all of that, I'm going to click publish again. It's going to ask me if I'm ready to publish and I'm going to select publish. Great. So if I go back to my event fundraising page, just going to reload it. You will see now my donate button is now highlighted and the join this event button is um, enabled so people can begin donating and joining my event. Um, so to join the event as a participant, all a participant would need to do is select that. Now currently um, the view that a participant will see is going to be a little bit different than this because I've created campaigns for the organization before. So because I've created campaigns for the organization before, it's letting me know, hey, you created campaigns uh, already, did you want to use that campaign for the event? Um, but for your participants, they're going to be prompted to 
create a login and password to sign up. And once they do so, they're gonna be asked if they want to start an individual fundraiser, a team, or if you already have teams, they're gonna be asked if they wanna join a team. So for this example, I'm actually gonna create some teams um, that are based off the departments at Mighty Cause that are going to be um, created and the employees within that department are gonna come together and fundraise. So I'm gonna create a fundraising team. So this is the team fundraising page. So very similar to uh, the event fundraising page, as you see, it is simply, you know, autofill your information. Whoops. And, and I'm gonna quickly add an image that represents our, the finance department. I'm gonna add a background image for my team. And I'm also going to add a goal in progress bar and story section. For my story section for right now, I'm just going to copy what the uh, what I have on the event fundraising page, but this is a great opportunity for teams to highlight about their group. Um, so to describe exactly, you know, the people within there, their mission, et cetera. And as well, as I mentioned, I'm going to add a goal amount for this team. So let's do $5,000. One thing that I also actually want to add on there is I want to add some additional metrics. Um, at the top, you'll automatically see dollars raised in number of members, but actually this event um, is going to be giving out prizes based off number of unique donors. So I actually want to highlight those stats on my team so that we can keep track of that really easily. So I'm going to add that stat on here. And if we scroll down the list, you'll see that there is that sponsor section that came through from the event automatically. So we've now just created our team. So if we actually select our event from here, we'll see within the leaderboard, our team has been added. So the choice of whether to create your teams or to create pages for your participants, that's totally up to you. Um, if you will definitely want to decide on a plan of action um, as you're creating your event fundraising page. Um, if you're planning on having people go through this process themselves, uh, as I said, we do have a support resource um, that you can send to them where it will help them guide them to really easily join your event. Uh, but, you know, we always recommend, you know, your support network, definitely recommend um, typing out your own um, instructions as to how to join and participate so that there's no confusion and everyone knows exactly how to join. Um, we try to make it self-explanatory, but obviously additional support is so helpful. So something that is available on the event fundraising page and your team fundraising page are fundraising templates. So as I mentioned, we want to make life really easy for the people that are participating. We don't want to make we don't want this process to be cumbersome for people. We want them to quickly create their fundraising pages. So through the settings section, there are three tabs available and the middle one is fundraiser template. And this allows us to fill in the blank some of the information that's going to be populated for individual participants. So you don't have to fill out all of this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and fill out some of this so that we can, you can kind of get an idea. I'm going to enter a recommended goal amount. Now again, people can go ahead and edit this information. I'm going to provide them um, information on their story. And I'm just going to copy and paste 
for the sake of this example, their story section. And the story section is honestly one of the most helpful things to add in a template uh, because this kind of saves people, again, that uh, portion of the fundraising page to complete. Uh, but again, people can go in and edit it. You can still recommend that they go in and add their own story and their own information about why they're um, you know, fundraising on behalf of your nonprofit. So now that our template's enabled, let's say I am the team captain of this finance department um, and I am sending people uh, this link to this team page so that they can begin in joining it. I'm gonna send them this link and all they have to do is select join team. They're just gonna get started. They're gonna create a new fundraiser. And as you see, uh, the information on the template has been auto-populated on this page. So all I have to do is simply go in there and add my information. On an individual fundraising page, there is also a publish button. So the individual can always check and see what they need to complete in order to publish their page. Great, now that I've published my page, if we go on it, the donate button is highlighted. It says that I'm a participant of this team, so I'm just going to open that team page. As you see, I've been added to the leaderboard here, and I've also been automatically added to the leaderboard here as well. One thing I want to shout out about the leaderboard is you do have a couple of display settings available to you. One is the ranking system. So you can rank participants by either dollars raised, number of donors, number of donations, or simply by alphabetical order. So if you don't want it to be competitive, you can just rank it by alphabetical order. And as well, the display format. So either if you want to show the organizer name, so the name of the account that created it, or if you want to display the fundraiser title. So as you see, instead of it saying Lisa, it says Lisa Smith Fundraising. Um, now one thing, one tip I will also recommend is that as I mentioned, there are some organizers that uh, prefer to create fundraising pages for their participants. Um, and if you are planning on creating fundraising pages for your participants, I would highly recommend to choose to display your fundraiser title. Otherwise, it will show your name populated multiple times on your leaderboard. So obviously, you don't want that to happen. So definitely show um, the fundraising title and make sure that the fundraising title is unique. So I'm just going to stop here for a second. We, I want to make sure that we cover any questions people have so far? Okay, so our first question is, is this the same as a campaign? I'm using Mighty Cause for Give Out Day and there isn't an event option, but there is a campaign option. Um, for Give Out Day, you should be able to create an, a fundraising event if you want to, or a, a, a team fundraising campaign um, that should still be available to you. Um, I can, if on your, um, for Give Out Day, if you are participating in Give Out Day, uh, if you go on Give Out Day, you should see a plus icon on the left-hand side of your page right here, and that should give you the ability to uh, start if an event or team, but I can get back to you on that as well. Uh, second question is, are these available for all versions? Yes, anyone can create an event or team, you can even create an attest event or team. You know, if you just want to try it out and see if this is something that 
you know, you're just brainstorming. You don't know if you're really going to, you know, create an event or team um, with your uh, support network. Feel free to do that. Um, so yeah, that is available on the free plan and there is no additional cost for this. Um, and the fee is, is the same as if you were going to receive a donation or your, on your organization page, it's just uh, per donation. Wonderful. So now that you, you've had you know, a team added on and now we've had a participant added on, you can keep track of this information through your campaigns and participants section on your left-hand side dashboard. So the campaign section is going to list that campaign name and the type. Um, so if you wanna search, oh, what are all my teams? or what are all my fundraisers, you can do so. Um, and with participants, that will list by the name and the email address. So again, let's say you wanna see what, what are all the people that have created a campaign, but they haven't published their page yet. You could search all of that within here. Um, and what's also great is you can email participants through here as well. So you can select the individual or everyone that you want to reach out to, select the message all members tool, the little mail icon, and you could send them an email. And you can do this throughout your campaign as well. There's no limit on how many times you can message participants through here. So this is a great way to motivate participants as they're getting started. Um, if you notice people haven't published their fundraising page, that's a great way to remind them to publish their page, um, et cetera. You can also export this list through this download icon and you can invite new members. So if you wanna send just an automatic email inviting new people, you just simply enter their email address in and then send them an invite. And as I mentioned, the team fundraising page has all of these tools also available on there as well. So there is a campaign section, there is a participant section. So again, if you're not planning on utilizing an event fundraising page, you just wanna utilize a team fundraising page, you have those tools available to you um, to share. Okay, so someone mentioned, so a question that just came up is about Eventbrite and what's the benefit of use, utilizing that? That's an awesome question. It kind of perfectly goes into um, another option that you have available. So as you see here, the um, participate button is, says join this event. And when donors or when participants select join this event, it takes them directly into um, beginning to create their fundraising page. Now let's say you have some sort of registration process or a ticketing process that you are planning on having for your campaign. Maybe you're selling, um, you know, maybe in order to participate in the readathon in this example, anyone who wants to participate has to pay $20 and part of that you're gonna get a shirt shipped out to you. Um, it can be anything, it also can be a free admission, but some sort of ticketing or registration process. Um, with the event fundraising page, we do have an integration set up with Eventbrite. So if you wanted that to um, be added on, um, what you would wanna do is head to eventbrite.com and set up an Eventbrite account. And through Eventbrite, you would set up your own registration page um, for the, that ticket portion of, or, or admission or registration portion of your event. Then you would head back to your event fundraising page and under the registration process, you would link your Eventbrite account with Mighty Cause. And once you do that, uh, you'll be able to choose a registration page that you've created through Eventbrite and sync it with Mighty Cause. And so what will happen is instead of saying join this event, your button will be changed to register. And when people select register, they're then going to be automatically taken to your registration page. So again, let's say they, it's, it's the example I gave, they have to pay $20, they have to register and they're gonna get a, a t-shirt. Once they've completed purchasing that admission, they're going to be automatically brought back here so that they can begin fundraising. 
So Eventbrite would be utilized if you need to combine fundraising with some sort of admission or registration. I hope that clears it up a little bit. Um, another question, do you have any relationship with Volunteer Hub similar to Eventbrite to connect volunteering with fundraising? Um, also a great question. We currently don't have an integration with Volunteer Hub. Um, with our advanced um, plan on our platform, we do have a volunteer tool available. Um, it's not necessarily added to your event page. It would be something that would be added to your organization profile page. Um, if you have any specific questions about that or you're interested in learning more about the volunteer tool, feel free to um, reach out to us support at mondaycause.com and we're more than happy to help answer any questions you have. Okay, great. So um, let's get into the donate button now. Um, so once we select donate, um, from the primary, oops, I select something too fast. So once you select donate from the main fundraising page, you'll have the option or donors will have the option to either donate to your general fund. And by general fund means overall event, right? I don't, I don't wanna support a particular person, I just wanna support your campaign that you're running. Or they can search for a specific individual. Um, but let's say I just wanna support the campaign, I don't wanna support a specific individual. Uh, the checkout page is self-explanatory. Um, donors have the option, they'll see four different options which you can customize, um, and they can always add their own custom amount, and they can also choose to set up recurring donations. They can add a dedication as well. Um, there's an ability to do designations from your organization profile page. If you wanna opt into collecting certain information like phone numbers, you can also opt into doing that. They'll be asked to enter their name as well as their email address and then provide credit card information. At the bottom, they'll see the ability, their total and the ability to cover transaction fees. So again, it would, it's standard as if you were donating on your organization profile page. If you need to customize the, uh, these amounts, you can do, throw, do so through the settings portion of your left-hand side dashboard. So if we go to settings and then select general fund, we'll be able to edit this donation flow. One thing to please note about this is that you are only, by editing this section, you are only editing the suggested donations on the general fund donation checkout page. So if you want to edit donations on individual fundraising, whoops, like team pages that are connected to your event, you would have to do it on that team or, or um, direct teams to do that. Um, if this is something you're really interested in as well, feel free to reach out to our support. We're also more than happy to help support you if you need every fundraising page to have a certain amount, we're more than happy to kind of work with you and help make sure that all of your fundraising pages have the same suggested donation levels listed. But those same tools are available on your team fundraising page. Again, if you're not planning on creating an event, you can simply select beneficiary set settings and same thing. Whoops, I'm sorry. That is actually available on your, yes, beneficiary setting. Lost track for a second. So all that's available here. So let's go back to the event again. So once you start getting donations in from your event, you're gonna be able to review all of that donor information through the report section. Uh, so you'll be able to filter in by a specific date range. So let's say you just want to review the donations from today, you could search that up. And you can also search by specific fundraiser. So if you want to pull up how Lisa's doing and all of the donors that she's received, you can pull that up. And most importantly, you can export this into an Excel sheet so that all of that information is available to you via CSV file. 
this uh, report right here, it's going to provide you the most pertinent information that you need on the donation. So obviously the donor's name, the amount, the date, the email, as well as the page that it came from. But if you are looking for additional information, let's say you are collecting phone numbers or you are collecting, um, you know, or you want to know what donors cover the transaction fee, download that Excel sheet and that information will be available there. And as well, um, you have the option to add offline donations. So if you are planning on collecting checks or cash for your event or any other, you know, uh, donation that you're receiving that's off of the platform, you can add that on here. So you would simply add that donor's name. So I'll just Bob Smith. He's giving us a check. I'm not going to add an email for right now today. And I want to designate it to Lisa's page. Uh, Bob wants to be anonymous, so I'm just going to hide his name from display. And then that donation is going to be added to my report. And then also, if I go to Lisa's page, ah, apologize, skipped a step. One thing you want to make sure is that you have your offline donation set to include. So you want to make sure that you're including offline donations. So you want to just select that as well. So we go back, now we'll see Bob's. And if we go to Lisa's, let's reload her page. It may just take a second, but it will show up uh, momentarily. Available there. All right, so um, then once that is, uh, once you've added all of your offline donations um, and you are reviewing your reports, um, you also have the opportunity to add a match on your page. So uh, if you are planning on attaining a match for your event, um, you can enter that through this space. And when you enter a match, it will actually show up on every fundraising page that you have. So this tool is similar to what you have on your organization profile page um, dashboard if you are an organization page administrator. So you simply enter your, da um, your match information and then that will show up on your event and any um, fundraiser that is attached to it. And again, that is also available within your report section and the match for teams. So lastly, let's go over some last settings that are available to you through the settings section on your left-hand side dashboard. So one of the uh, tools that's available to you is making the event invite only or anyone can join. Um, and making it invite only removes the join this event tool on your uh, page. So if you just want people to come in and donate, you don't want to give them the option to join it. You just want to invite people to do that so, not, so that no one's uh, joining it without your permission. Um, you'd want to select it to invite only if you want that. Social sharing allows you to edit the image and the text that comes up when people sh send or share a link of your page on social media. So if I wanted to update this and add a better description, um, add a, a Twitter hashtag, I could do so and that will populate. The customized URL allows you to end the, uh, to customize the end URL of your event. Um, so let's say I wanted to make this Mighty Virtual 2020. Now my URL has been updated to Mighty Virtual 2020. Progress calculation, you'll notice this tool on any fundraising page uh, in the settings. Um, that means that that is the date where donations are being calculated from. So um, right now donations are being calculated from um, the 31st, um, starting at 313. Um, and that actually is why uh, my offline donation was not showing up 
on my fundraising page of because of the date that I added that offline donation. I set it to 3 p.m. and that's before my event um, is calculating donations. Um, so that's a great example if you're planning on adding offline donations to your event, you wanna make sure that it's after this date and time. Um, again, if you have any questions, you can feel free to um, contact our support at mightycause.com. Offline donation tracking, if you want to include offline donations, you wanna make sure that you have that enabled so that you can add those and make sure those are um, added on there. Okay, so let's say that your event is, or team is finished. You are done with your campaign um, and you kind of wanna put a pause to it right now. So you have three different tools available to you. So one is discoverability. By turning off discoverability, you're hiding it from the platform. So if anyone comes onto the platform and searches for your campaign, they're not gonna be able to find it. Um, they would still have access to it if they have a direct link, uh, but uh, if they were to search it on here, they wouldn't have it. Turn off donations um, disables donations for your event. So definitely if you want to stop accepting donations, from for your campaign, you want to make sure that you select turn off donations and this disables donations. And then the last is visitor redirect. So this is a great tool if you are planning an annual campaign or even if you're planning um, you know, a new campaign right after this old one. So when people access the link to your campaign, uh, if you place a new visitor redirect here, when people come onto it, they're going to be prompted to head to the new page that you've added on here. So it's a really great use, especially if you're, as I said, if you're doing a campaign that you're doing recurring, you don't want people accessing your 2019 one, you want them to come to your 2020 one. Within settings, we've already gone through fundraiser template and general funds. Uh, so you have all those tools available and um, with the checkout portion, with the thank you page and your uh, and any hyperlink you have on there, just know anything within here you are editing in regards to your general funds and the tools are also available on the team as well. All right, so that it was a, a quick overview actually of everything within the events and teams product and all the tools that you have available to you. I'm gonna leave the last couple of minutes for any questions people have. Um, you know, as you hopefully have seen, it's pretty easy process as long as you kind of know where you're going a little bit, uh, but we try to make it as seamless as possible for any user. So please feel free to utilize the right hand side if you have any questions. Okay, so it doesn't look like we have any more questions coming in. Um, this video walkthrough is gonna be provided to you uh, in a follow-up email, so you'll have that available to you to review. As I mentioned, we do have a whole support forum and we actually have a support article that kind of breaks down exactly what I went through, so I would definitely recommend checking that out. And as I have also mentioned throughout this webinar, please feel free to email us, support at mightycause.com. We're more than happy to kind of help guide you or steer you in the right direction, um, you know, and help support you in any way. And as well, we will be having a survey sent out after this webinar. We're always trying to figure out what's the best way of, um, you know, providing support to organizations. So please let us know, you know, what type of support you would love to see in the future coming from Mighty Cause. Um, and I do see one additional question. How do you enter offline donations to individual teams? Great question. So it's actually similar process to um, as, as you just saw that I did from the event page. So if you as the organizer are planning on adding the offline donation, 
then you would simply select the um, you would select the team listed here. Um, I would have to double check why it's not listed here, but you would be able to select the team as well. Um, if you're planning on having the organizers themselves enter their own offline donations, they would just head over to their own report and then it looks the same and they would be able to provide their own offline donation on here. All right, well, I think that's everything for today. Uh, please let us know if you need any help and I hope everyone has a lovely and safe day. Thank you so much, bye.